It is a quarter to 8 a.m. Uh, February 3rd, 2023. Uh, I'm here in the office. I have a big clinic day, uh, but I'm here a little bit early, so I figured I'd shoot a little something just for fun. So, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrup. Uh, you may have heard of them. <laughs> They're only like one of the most successful uh, camera and photography related YouTube channels. Um, now, like other very successful uh, channel, um, you know, they garner a lot of fans, but also a lot of haters. And, you know, I can't claim to know why haters hate. Sometimes, you know, haters gonna hate. <laughs> But I, I, I figured I'd talk about why I get irked a little bit by Tony and Chelsea Northrop. First of all, you know, I, for the most part, I quite like their content. I learn a lot about, uh, or I have learned a lot about photography from them. And I do appreciate that they cover even basic topics. Um, you know, for a long time, they've sort of uh, tried to clear out myths surrounding things like you know, aperture and depth of field and how um, sensor size affects that. It seems to be a very contentious issue for some reason among photographers. You know, they also cover sort of uh, misconceptions about um, pixel resolution of these sensors and low light performance. So that's, that's great. You know, I, I like that stuff. But, you know, one of the big things that really irked me about their channel is just how much advertising there is. <laughs> now, I, I will I will say immediately that this is not a problem solely with Tony and Chelsea Northup. It's actually a problem, I find, with a lot of successful camera channels, but, you know, just successful YouTube channels as a whole. Yeah, you know, it's I find it, I find it very, very obtrusive. Um, the, you know, Tony and Chelsea would just talk, 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 and then just immediately start talking about freaking Squarespace or some other thing. KEH is another common one that they'll talk about. It's so obtrusive. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think back to other forms of media that we uh, enjoy, and, and, and I think, I don't know that any other uh, media has this kind of obtrusive advertising, right? When you go to a play, actors don't just suddenly start talking about Squarespace, right? Or you're uh, watching a movie, like the latest Avengers movie, and the Hulk doesn't suddenly start talking about Squarespace. Uh, maybe you're listening to Ariana Grande, you know, she's singing. She doesn't suddenly start singing about Squarespace, right? Yeah, I, you know, mo for the most part, like in these sort of, if you want to call them art, right? These pieces of art, uh, media, entertainment. The entertainment is is contained in and of itself without the the ads kind of flooding through. Now I know that a lot of people are probably furiously commenting, but what about TV? You know, network TV, cable TV, whatever. Um, yeah, I know. I, I, I grew up with TV. I, I, I lived in a time before YouTube. I, I, I know that TV has advertising, but I don't, I, I never felt it to be as intrusive as it is on YouTube. Um, you know, with TV, I find that there are natural breaks when the, when the ads come on, right? It's generally at the, towards the end of a scene. Right, if you're watching a sitcom or something, there's the end of a scene, and then it goes into the ad, right? Or if you're watching like a game show or something, Wheel of Fortune, you know, Pat Sajak will be like, okay, and we'll be back after these messages, and then it cuts into advertising. It's never just like uh, Pat Sajak says, oh, you know, why don't you spin the wheel? And while you spin the wheel, I'm going to talk about my favorite website creation tool, Squarespace, right? The, the, the actors and the, the performers, the entertainers themselves don't start just talking about the thing that they're, that, you know, that they're selling. Um, 
you know they don't just go go into the ads it's the 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 art the media the entertainment piece has some kind of separation from the advertisement and i also find that with tv at least traditional tv it didn't feel like it was so much you know advertisement because i think uh in a, like a traditional 30 minute sitcom you expect three ads uh, or you know, ad breaks i should say not necessarily ads ad breaks so that averages out to what like one every 10 minutes with youtube it's like one every few minutes you know it's so much and um and not and and uh, you know the thing that 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 i was talking about earlier you know the, also having the entertainment entertainers themselves just kind of just break into advertising on top of this sort of ads that youtube plays it's just so much it feels so much and i know some people will say well you can skip them but it's i don't know it's like it still feels very obtrusive all of these ads just too much um you know even if you can skip them you're like now f having to to interact with the with the app or whatever with youtube you're yeah, furiously clicking the skip ad button so anyway uh i i don't like it and um yeah i talked a little bit about this in another video about how advertising i think is contributing to the downfall of society through its effects on news you know this is another area where it's uh kind of having negative effects it's just entertainment and and media um i i think it's a double-edged sword you know on the one hand media sorry uh, uh, advertising comes with so much money that um you know that uh, uh the entertainment industry has gained a lot from it right they're able to do lots and lots more because of these dollars right um, they don't have to necessarily rely on a much less certain income revenue as people paying you know for tickets or whatever to go watch a thing because you've already sunk the cost and you just you're hoping people will show up to watch right by having advertising you know pay for a production ahead of time there's less risk so i i get it right and the thing is if you're making a movie like freaking avengers or avatar that costs like hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars to make uh you know the only way you're gonna get that <laughs> right off the that right on the front end is through advertising. Not that Avatar or Avengers are necessarily advertising during the movie, but I mean, I, these, I don't know about Avatar, I haven't seen Avatar 2, but but you know, certainly movies like Avengers, they, they have subtle product placements, you know? But but the, the, the sort of ill effect that advertising is having on YouTube as a whole, I think, uh, you know, if we were to l limit the scope of, uh, a little bit here, it's just that it kind of drives um, up production and uh, the cost of production, right? You got all these YouTube channels now that like focus so much on things that don't matter. Uh, you know, they, they make the videos look nice. They look like they have great production value, but like ultimately things don't matter. Uh, you know, um, uh, I actually don't think that Tony and Chelsea Northrop are a great example of this uh, because uh, their setup is relatively simple. Um, uh, but, the, you know, if you look at, say, MKBHD, is one of the most successful tech YouTube channels. Like, you know, there's so much money sunk into that sort of production, right? There's all these motion graphics that... I don't think really adds a whole lot. It's nice to look at, but like doesn't really add a whole lot to the content. And the, and the guy has like a freaking cinema robot that moves the camera around a product. Yeah, it's cool to look at, but like, does it add that much? I mean, it's for the first like five seconds in the intro of his videos. And then like, that's it. But it's like some super expensive cinema robot 
uh, you know, that's doing that. The guy also shoots on a red camera, like a cinema grade red camera in like 8K or something like that. Does the YouTube channel really need all of these things? I argue no. <laughs> um, certainly, yeah, like they make the, the videos good to look at, but uh, if it's trading that kind of production value for less ads, I would definitely take less ads. Because let's be honest, MKBHD, I doubt that you're watching this, but like I like your videos not for all of that crap. All of the motion graphics and cinema robot and the freaking red camera footage. I like it because of you and you know you having a, a very sort of level headed um and thorough sort of uh, approach to tech not all that other crap right but but all that other crap kind of drives up the cost of production such that you will need to rely on things like advertising some people might want to point out that maybe the robot was donated or maybe the red camera was donated it doesn't matter whether he bought it with his own money or not, that's still money going into the production that had to be paid for essentially through advertising. I mean, MKBHD is far from being the, the biggest sort of offender when it comes to mid-sentence ad reads, but you know, he's just, he's just an example of um, a YouTube channel that just has way more production value than is necessary. Now, maybe one of the things that makes his channel so good is some of the other things like very good writers, maybe a team of tech reviewers that we don't necessarily see on camera, but he has to employ. And these things do cost money. That stuff I, I'm, I'm all for. Like that kind of expense, I think, is fully justified because <laughs> that actually as to the quality of the content but you know a lot of the other stuff i, I argue is not really necessary i mean c come on can you imagine going to like a museum and you see like the mona lisa except she's like holding a mcdonald's hamburger <laughs> or like you go and see gustav Klimt's the kiss but the woman's holding like a coca-cola can it's so obtrusive, you know, advertising these days. I don't want to talk for too much longer. I, I know that one of the things, to go back to Tony and Chelsea Northrop, one of the things that they advertise a lot is their photography books and their photography courses and stuff like that. That stuff, I find a little bit much too because they, they, they push that stuff so much and so hard. But at least I kind of understand. That's their own business, right? As their own product they probably feel very strongly about it and they believe very strongly in it and are genuinely proud of the product that they are selling and they probably believe that it that their their photography and educational material are having a positive impact on you know the photography community i can kind of understand that because if they don't sell it nobody else is going to sell it <laughs> unless they're paying other people to advertise for them i don't know that they are um so like that stuff fine you know you're your own channel you get to sell your own merch um all right uh, again i don't want to go too much longer on this but uh, you know i think another problem that people might have with uh, tony Joshi northrop um and this has little to nothing to do with advertising but i'm just going to tack this on it's clickbait title and clickbait um, uh, thumbnails because uh, they definitely have very clickbaity uh, titles and thumbnails. Um, by contrast, I, I find that NKBHD tends not to have very clickbaity titles um, or or thumbnails. Uh, you know, if they do, if if he does have clickbait stuff, it it at least definitely reflects the content that is coming. And it tends not to be very clickbaity, whereas Tony and Chelsea Northup tends to be very clickbaity. <laughs> Whether they're almost like uh, intentionally trying to inflame sort of these K 
camera fanboy wars <laughs> with their title. Not that I think that they are, you know, uh, fanboys of any particular camera brand. I think they're generally pretty level-headed, but they'll put stupid titles just to you know, inflame them. So, yeah. No bueno. Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to end it here. I'll see you in the next one.